Godzilla vs. Kong is the brand new HBO Max and movie theater simultaneous release. The film stars Alexander Skarsgård, Rebecca Hall, Brian Tyree Henry, Julian Dennison, Millie Bobby Brown, and Kyle Chandler, as well as Isaac Gonzalez. And it's about um, Godzilla is doing something wrong on Earth. He's attacking the company called Apex for some weird reason. So they call in Alexander Skarsgård and Rebecca Hall to get Kong um, into play to find a new world to track him to get this power source to find a new world and hopefully help them with the with the Godzilla issue at the same time a podcast conspiracy theorist played by Brian Tyree Henry is trying to show what the government may have been doing wrong to Godzilla so he takes with him Julian Denison and back from the Godzilla King of Monsters film Millie Bobby Brown they try to uncover what the government is truly doing about the Godzilla situation the film is an hour 53 minutes and is PG-13. Before I get into this review, guys, if you're new to the channel, my name is Max Zinnenberg. Welcome to Max Talks Movies. Right again, review, please like the video. Comment down below your thoughts of Godzilla versus Kong. Were you anticipating this film? Did you love the film, hate the film? Are you in between? Do you actually like the film? Where's the rank for you in the MonsterVerse? And also let me know, guys, in the comment section, did you see this movie in a theater or did you see it at home on HBO Max. Um, also, I do movie reviews, TV show reviews, stream platform reviews, and movie rankings. If you like one of those things, please consider hitting that subscribe button as I try to get to 100 subscribers. Now let's get into the review. So as I said, I had to ask you guys if you saw it in a movie theater or you saw it at home, because this is the first movie in over a year that I got a chance to see in an actual movie theater. Um, the last movie I saw before this was March 6th, of 2020, where me and my two friends went to go see Onward. And this movie is the first film, and this is April 1st, 2nd, I'm seeing this well over a year since I have seen a movie in a movie theater. This was absolutely, I had a lot of emotion, not like emotional, like crying or anything, but I felt right back in the business, right back at home in a movie theater, watching this film with other people, eating popcorn and really enjoying myself. So now let's get into my overall thoughts. I I'm going to do my MonsterVerse ranking later this weekend. But overall, I was pretty excited for this film. I knew it did not need to take itself seriously. The trailers really did work for me. A lot of the new cast additions were interesting, even though the, the worst parts of these MonsterVerse movies is the humans. Always they are terrible or just meh. So it's exciting to see if they would show a lot of less human, just get Godzilla and Kong fighting. I just had no idea what to expect. And really the plot line of the movie, the only thing I got from the trailer was that this girl could communicate with Kong. Other than that, the trailer doesn't really show you that much actual plot detail. So let's get into my review. This movie definitely executes with its Godzilla versus Kong action set pieces. The CGI is fantastic in this movie. Um, and you and the, their fight scenes, the fight scenes, the set action set pieces are really fantastic. It's all basically during the day, uh, which means you can basically see everything that is going on. One of my main complaints about the last film, Godzilla King of the Monsters, was everything was happening at night. So it was kind of struggling to see everything that was going on. This movie takes that criticism and everything's basically happening during the day. So you can clearly see the fights between Godzilla and Kong and the work done to both uh, characters uh, CGI wise was truly fantastic. You can feel how large they are compared to everyone else. Um, and the fight scenes are quite brutal, not like chopping off anyone's head or anything, but just a brutal fight. You can really feel every punch the way the shots are are filmed by Adam Wingard, the director, was really immersive in the sound. You can really feel every punch thrown by one of these two characters throughout the film. Also, the, um, pleasantly to say, the film is it moves perfectly. Um, it has a really good pacing. You're not really bored at all during the entire movie. There is a subplot, which I'll get to, that I was like, ah, can we go back to the other one? But overall, the film, I never looked at my watch. I never looked at my phone the entire movie saying, when is this movie over? It was a very fast paced film that really flew by. And the great thing about this movie that it doesn't take itself too seriously for the most part. Um, and when they're fighting and some of the musical choices, not uh, the score from Junkie XL, but they have a couple songs in there. You can tell the movie just isn't taking itself seriously, which is what you want to see in Godzilla versus Kong. You just want to see these two characters fight each other. You don't really care about the humans. You just want to see these two people get into action. But to make a movie about this, 
you do need human characters. Now I did like these human characters, in my opinion, they had more to do with the story that I liked better than the last two films, Kong Skull Island and Godzilla King of the Monsters. Now, even though some of those characters from past films are in the movie, they still are basically the same. But the, the heart of the movie is this little, uh, little girl who is, I think, deaf, and she can actually do sign language with Kong. And they have a lot of touching moments of, of a bond, and you can really feel them their bond emotionally. And I didn't feel like we got any resemblance of anyone caring for these creatures until you really get to see this little girl and Kong. And they have a really good relationship that continues throughout the entire film that I thought was really well done. Now, even though there were some parts, I was like, well, of course this happened. It was still a nice relationship that the film desperately needed because let's get into my negatives. The human characters, once again, are dull at best in this movie. Um, we have, of course, a whole military subplot. We have a big company called Apex, ran by Damien Bashir, who could be creating something that Godzilla is not happy with, and that's why Godzilla is destroying some places. And it's just a very mustache twirling, basically evil villains of the movie that we saw in the last film as well. Just very disappointing. Um, and as I said, there is a main plot line. And I'll just say this too. Kong is really the main, out of these two characters, Kong gets a lot more screen time than Godzilla. I was talking to people about this, my friends, and they were like, well, Godzilla did get two movies. And I was like, you know what? You're, you're right. Now, even though Godzilla was barely in his own movie in Godzilla, he still was a, pretty much in a lot of King of Monsters. Kong gets a lot of depth and background that I really wasn't expecting. And that's a pause. Now I do think we need a lot more Godzilla. There really is no explanation for the most part, how Godzilla knows stuff is happening with companies that could be building something. There really is no explanation. Just Godzilla is blowing stuff up for some reason because he senses, I guess, something going on bad with the humans. So it just didn't really make a lot of sense. And because we didn't get enough of Godzilla, you don't really, you don't really get why Godzilla is doing certain things in the movie but you really feel for Kong throughout the film. It's not making you feel like you have to root for Kong over Godzilla. It's giving you two different perspectives on the situation, which I thought was nice, but still the human characters were pretty met. Uh, the only character that I really liked in the movie, other than that little girl, was Brian Tyree Henry, who again, as I said, plays a conspiracy theorist, who has a podcast that Millie Bobby Brown listens to because she really does care about Godzilla. And this guy wants to show why the government is doing something wrong with Godzilla. He is the funniest part of the entire film. When he's on screen, the film does have some fun. He has some funny lines. He has good chemistry with Brown and Dennison. And the film just, just feels a lot more energetic human-wise when he is on screen. Now, his subplot really isn't that interesting with him, Julian Dennison, and Millie Bobby Brown. The, the, you really want to keep watching because they're not interacting with any of the characters. These three characters are trying to break into Apex the entire movie. They're not interacting with all with Godzilla. And obviously the main storylines with Kong, with Skarsgård, Rebecca Hall, Isaac Gonzalez, and the little girl. So when they're on screen, it feels like something's happening because every time they're on screen, Kong is involved. But every time we keep going back to that Brian Tyree Henry, Julian Dennison, and Millie Bobby Brown storyline, nothing really feels like it's happening. Like nothing really is happening. They're just discovering stuff and giving us exposition on what's going on with the government. They're not really doing anything special in particular. And for the second movie in a row, Millie Bobby Brown is just daughter in distress. Now she was a lot more daughter in distress in the last movie, but in this one, she's still just Try, she seems more of, I guess, a badass in this movie, but she still doesn't really do much. She just walks around, acts like she knows a lot. I mean, she clearly does, but she doesn't really do anything to warrant her being a main character in the movie. And that's why, again, as we keep going to her storyline, it really isn't as interesting, even though I am a huge fan of Brown and Tyree Henry. And then Alexander Skarsgård is just a scientist who they just plucked out of nowhere to do this thing. And Rebecca Hall is, I guess, the Kong Whisperer, even though she really isn't her adopted daughter is so her character i thought was probably the better ones but still pretty dull with these human characters and also if you i was going to talk to my brother about this later about he hasn't seen any of the monsterverse films should he see this film you do not need to see 
any of the rest of the films if you want to see this movie. If you have not seen Godzilla, Kong Skull Island, and Godzilla King of the, King of the Monsters, you don't have to see those movies. The only thing that they really take from those movies into this movie is that Kyle Chandler is the father of Millie Bobby Brown. Even though there's no mention of Vera Farmiga's character being alive or being dead in this entire movie after she clearly survived in the last movie. So obviously they wanted her back, couldn't get her back, and they brought her up once and they didn't really answer why she's not doing anything in the situation because they're recognizing, people are recognizing Millie Bobby Brown as her daughter, not Kyle Chandler's daughter. So it's a little bit all over the place with that. But again, these human characters are dull and there are some cheesy lines that I cracked up because I was like, why is this being said? And a lot of common sense with what the humans are doing is not good. And I'm a big, also a very big Isaac Gonzalez fan. She's probably the most annoying character in the entire film. She's there because her father is Damon Bashir and she and he wants her to watch over Skarsgård and um, Rebecca Hall's uh, Kong stuff. And she's just like, and she's basically either says, you, you're, you better do the right thing or just hopefully we don't die. She just repeatedly says the same lines over and over again. And she was, for some reason, I don't know why she's in, her character was in the movie for over an hour, but that's just what it is. But overall, guys, I still had a fun time. Finally, this will be a special movie for me, obviously, because it's the first time since the pandemic I have been in a theater. So this movie will have something special to say to me in my heart. But overall, guys, this is not great cinema, but I still had a fun time with this, I'm going to give Godzilla King, uh, sorry, Godzilla versus Kong, a three out of five stars, a 63%. The human characters are still not that good. And a lot of content, you're kind of asking yourselves, what is going on at certain points? But when they Godzilla and Kong face off, it is a fun movie that breezes by. So let me know, you guys, your thoughts. Did you agree with my opinion? Disagree. I will be doing my MonsterVerse ranking um, this weekend. Also, my ranking of all the March films I saw in the month of March. I'll be doing that as well this weekend. So a lot more videos coming down the pipeline. If you're new to the channel, I have some movie reviews popping up next to my channel, all the movies I've seen in 2021. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys in the next one.